Now I'm going to talk about the next segment of the success how to do formula, which is PA, proper action. Without proper action, you won't obtain your core desires. Duh, that's another super simple thing. If you never ever do what you're supposed to do to get where you're supposed to go, if you don't get in the car, you never go anywhere. If there's no win, row, an old Latin proverb says, you got to do something correctly. So I love that proverb because it says, man, we got to get in the boat, but we won't go anywhere if we don't row. Duh. But I add two things. Hey, be sure you add with two oars, but first untie the boat from the dock. That's proper action. And you know what? If you want to get there faster, you might not want to be in a rowboat. You might want to get in a motorboat. You really want to get there fast. Don't take a ship. Don't take a boat. Take a plane. Proper action. Wanting to go to the Smithsonian Institute and clearly defining the route on the map and the route to get there doesn't get you there. You've taken some action by reading about it. Proper action. You bought the map and you're real clear on what it's going to take to get there. You've calculated the gas and how long it's going to take and what you need to do to get there and, and how long. That's all proper action. You still got to get in your car though. You got to fill it with gas and take off. This is where proper action combined with direction is important. Without the map, you could have, at best, a difficult time in getting there. And maybe you'll fail, even with the best or fastest car on earth. Should you have the car tuned before you go? Should you check the tires? Maybe you should replace them. Should you check the brakes? Maybe you should invite somebody to go with you so you're not driving alone. Make it a whole lot more comfortable and fun. You should make sure that you have enough money. When you take a trip, duh, it's one of the things you got to do. It's a proper action thing. In fact, when you're working to a, towards a genuine core desire, fear is not a limiting factor anymore because you have all of the direction, proper direction, given to you by somebody you trust on what to do. You may not be totally confident on how well you'll do it, but your fear is reduced considerably because somebody knows what they're doing, held your hand, showed you how, or is showing you how, and you're now a trying to, what's the right word, <clears throat> attempting to do it. The fact you're afraid to try something won't apply when a core desire is involved. It's irrelevant. Fear does not stop anybody when you really want it bad enough. While it's still possible to have some doubts, that's a reality. You could still doubt. Hmm. Or an intermittent fear or two, not a problem. It won't stop you. It might slow you down. And if you get scared, worried, fearful about something and have doubts, what do you do? Go back to the mentor. Go back to the book, the source of the information in the first place. Get proper direction and then apply proper action. If you're afraid to do something, you do it anyway. Are you afraid or brave? I asked that in an earlier segment. What was the answer? The answer is both. Core desires make fear manageable. It doesn't mean it goes away, but you do it anyway. One guy taught me it this way. One of my mentors, he said, I told him I had butterflies in my stomach when I started my speaking career. He said, everybody does. Just make them fly in formation. And I did. And now the butterflies are gone. I can stand in front of thousands of people. Gone. But at first, it wasn't. But I wanted to be a speaker so badly that I made the butterflies fly in formation. That's the power of core desires. Oh, don't confuse hard work with proper action. I believe there are millions of people who are hard workers, but they never enjoy the pleasures of, of focusing on and living in the world of core desires in all areas of their life. They might be really good in one of them or two of them but so wanting on all the others. It's been said that, and I hate this phrase, the harder you work, the luckier you get. That's just not true. Only when you're doing the right work will you get the right action. Proper action. How many people do you know who just spin their wheels? I mean, they get in the car and they rev up the engine and they just spin their wheels and they kick up a lot of dust, a whole lot of effort, lots of hours of work, maybe even lots of money invested, but no real results. They keep doing what has, they've always done, and that doesn't work. So their lives stay the same, day in and day out. Some people come to me for advice, but they don't take my advice, so they stay stuck. And after they report back to me what's going on, I notice that they didn't apply what I told them to apply. That's not because they're stupid. It's because their core desire is to stay in their comfort zone, not because they can't learn what I or someone else would teach them. They keep working and working and staying busy, there's a lot of difference between busy and productive, but never seem to get ahead, let alone get what they want. Here's a true story. I hired, I hired a salesman who had a lot of potential. I went to him with some leads and I said, call these people. They'd responded positively to, positively to a mailing that I'd done and were expected to be contacted. At the time, I noticed he had nine or ten on, time, 
items on his desk. Maybe three foot desk by four foot desk. Maybe it wasn't too big. Well, when I returned a half hour later, I asked him if he'd made any calls and what the results were. Embarrassingly, he said no. He was so embarrassed. Oh, geez. I've been cleaning up my desk. What? What's to clean up? His response was, ah, uh, you're right. I'm stalling. He was honest and truthful. Truth is, he was scared. I gave him an A for being honest. Making phone calls wasn't a core desire for him. Or they were at 50, maybe. And so he put it off and put it off. That's what pro procrastination is. One day he told me excitedly, Guess what, Jack? I made 100 calls today and I feel great. I said, Well, good. How many people did you actually talk to? Um, four. Oh, and of the four, how many bought or were interested? He said, mm, None. They weren't the right people. Well, he was so excited about that day. He had confused action with results. It's a good example of being busy or spinning wheels, thinking it was proper action when it wasn't. Proper action always brings results. So he called 100 people, talked to four, got zero results. That's a great day? No, it's not. Now, nobody hits a home run all the time. That's not my point. The example of that story was to help you understand that people mix up being busy and hard work with results. Proper action gets you results. And I repeat that mentors are the best way to learn proper action so you can get all of your core desires at the same time.